to have you with us, Zach. Thanks for having me. So why expand at a time when we're, we're going through this U.S. financial crisis? I mean, a lot of the companies out there are cutting back on spending. Well, the interesting thing about what we do, we provide software as a service, which is a little bit of a different model. Traditionally, when you use business applications like accounting applications, you install the applications yourself. We deliver our applications over the Internet. So there's a major cost-cutting component of what we do. And we've historically seen our business thrive in good times and in bad because of that cost-cutting Well, how have aspect. you done over the past year since the subprime crisis started? Did you do okay with sales or that kind of pushback? Well, we've been doing very well. We grew, I think our last quarter, we grew 43% in terms of the top line, in terms of revenue year over year. So uh, you'd be hard-pressed to find other software companies growing at that rate. Now, why the expansion here in Hong Kong and specifically Asia? Because the, the crisis isn't just in the U.S. It's, it's already spreading globally. There is a crisis of confidence going on now in the markets. Yeah, it's part of our plan to expand our footprint globally. And if you look at that 43% revenue growth, that was worldwide. We're actually growing at a faster rate outside of the U.S. And, in, and Asia is our fastest growing market segment. So we just believe there's an enormous opportunity. And the other, the other opportunity we have is that we sell to small and mid-sized enterprises. Rather than the, the Fortune 500, we sell to what I call the Fortune 5 million. And it turns out when you look at China, it's actually the Fortune 50 million. There's something like 42 million small and medium enterprises in, in China alone. So it's just a huge opportunity. And again, people buy our software when there's growth. And that can be positive growth or negative growth. So, uh, so we have an opportunity in up and down markets, I believe. So how much higher than 43% if this is the fastest growing region for your company? Well, it's just we haven't really broken it out. I think what, what have we said is something like 60% outside the U.S. in terms of our growth rate. And that includes Europe and Asia. And, uh, and so it's, it's definitely growing faster. And we believe that will continue even in this marketplace. So in, say, the next three to five years, can you foresee Asia to, to become the bigger market for you versus the U.S.? I think it, it's hard to project that, but we'll see what happens. As I said, the opportunity is enormous, particularly in greater China. Uh, but Hong Kong's also going to be a great opportunity for us. That's why we're putting our footprint down here. There's the, the companies here are very well suited to what NetSuite provides. So we're excited about both Hong Kong and Greater China. Such as what, what companies? Uh, do, do these companies include financial services, or is it a broader spectrum? Well, we have, a, we have small exposure to financial services. Our, our largest vertical, our largest ind industry segment are wholesalers and distributors. So when you look at Hong Kong as a distribution center, really, for the world, we think there's a great opportunity for, for those types of customers to use NetSuite. But you haven't really turned in a profit, and you've been in business for a much longer time, I mean, compared to your rival Salesforce. When are you going to turn in a profit? Well, we were founded really about the same time as Salesforce.com, and our idea has been to provide, continue to show improvement on the bottom line, but reinvest in growing the top line. So even when we become profitable, we're going to continue to invest in the top line, and, and uh, it's really all about revenue growth and market growth at this point for us rather than a uh, margin expansion on the bottom so line. So how soon can that happen? You turning in a profit, do you think this is going to happen this year? Well, we haven't really provided any forecasts in that. I think analysts have us uh, projected to be to turn profitable in fiscal year 09. You know, some of the analysts are saying that uh, a lot of people think that Oracle is going to buy your company. It is the company for sale? Well, you know, we're a public company, so we'd have to be open to anyone who made overtures. But I think if you look at our ownership structure and Larry Ellison owning a majority share, uh, the good thing about NetSuite is we really haven't focused on ever being acquired. We've really focused on building a great software company, the next great software company, I believe. I think we could be the SAP of the mid-market. So with that ownership structure and the, the fact that we don't have to worry about other people acquiring us or it's not really the core exit strategy for the company, we've really focused on building a great company. But has Larry Ellison brought this up to you? The, the potential of, of him buying the company. Oh, no, no. We never really talk about any, anything like that. When I talk to Larry, it's about how do we make NetSuite a better company. We, we never talk about Oracle or issues related to Oracle. And what about potential buyers? Are you talking to any? Nope. Just mm -hmm. continuing along the, the lines, building the company, expanding the footprint. And uh, we have plenty of partnerships. We have partnerships all over the world with Google and Yahoo and Apple and other companies. So. Uh, we're, we're great at partnerships and, and building that sort of aspect of the company. Great. Good to talk to you. Thanks for that, Zach. Thanks for having me. Zach Nelson of NetSuite.